Hey Vine Church, Pastor Brandon here. Hopefully you're having a good week. Uh, we're going to jump back into the Bible together today as we do every Thursday. Of course, this is the time where we just uh, jump in the scriptures, meditate on the scriptures, and spend some time in prayer together. So uh, I hope as always this is an encouragement to you to spend time in the Word of God. Uh, and the whole purpose behind this, of course, is, is relationship with our God, with our Creator. And so the best way for relationship is us to communicate with Him and Him to communicate with us. And so we want to spend time in His Word and in prayer. So uh, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 3 today. We've been doing Proverbs here for the last few weeks. And essentially, we're just trying to look at the wisdom of God. Like we're, the idea that God is the one that generates and gives to us wisdom. And so we want that. We want his insight, his knowledge, his understanding, his wisdom to guide and direct our life. As we're making decisions for our life, you know, how to raise kids, how to interact in relationship with others, how to engage our, our work and our, our careers and and the many other different things that we have to, to process and think through and make decisions on in life. We want wisdom, knowledge, instruction to be able to make wise and good decisions. And so Proverbs is just a great place for us to jump in and see the wisdom of God. Uh, so we're going to be in chapter 3 here this, today, and we're going to just cover the first 12 verses here to see what the Lord has for us in our time here together today. Uh, let me go ahead and read that, and we'll just break it apart here. So uh, verse 1, it says, My son, do not forget the teaching... Uh, but let your heart, sorry, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all of your produce, that your barns will be filled with plenty and that your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary when he, uh, when, of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him who he loves, and the father, as the father, the son, whom he delights. Um, so if you look at this, just 12 verses there in Proverbs, there's multiple different pieces of wisdom that's being thrown out. And if you really kind of break it down, it's kind of neat how he gives like, hey, do this, and here's the, resp the result. Do this, here's the result. Do this, here's the result. And we've talked before in Proverbs, the idea that it's not meant to always work that way. But Proverbs is trying to say, if you do this, generally speaking, these are the good positive outcomes that are going to happen. Not that that always happens, but, but predominantly because that's how God's designed his world to work and operate. And so the first one here, the idea is saying, don't forget his teaching and keep his commandments. So the idea of listening to, desiring, longing for the teaching of God, the commandments of God. The only way you're going to be able to follow and not forget God's teachings and to keep his commandments is actually spend time in his word, right? The practice that we're doing right here together today is the idea of not forgetting his teachings, keeping his commandments. It's the idea of knowing what God would desire. So he's saying knowing it and keeping what God would teach and what God would command, it's going to lead to length of days, length of years, and peace will be added to you. You know, so... The, so the idea of like, okay, is, this, is it weird? Like if I do what God says, I'm going to live till I'm 80 years old? Maybe, maybe not. But the idea is the idea that if I'm following God's commands, if I'm following the teaching of God, it is going to lead to a, a health of life that usually leads to length of, of days, to long days, long years of life. The idea, if, if that is something we desire, a, many days, many years, long life, the idea of following what God has designed life to work and operate is going to play into health, which leads to long years of life and, and peace in the midst of that. The next one he throws out here is verse 3 and 4. He says, Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you, so that you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. So, so making that our life is connected with both steadfast love and faithfulness. Steadfast love, of course, being a love that's constant, that's always there, that's persever persevering. The idea of faithfulness coincides with that. Like it's, it's not like we're, we're here one day and gone the next day. 
you know, caring for someone now, but not caring for them the next. That idea of steady, steadfast love and faithfulness will lead to favor and good success, both with God and with humanity, right? Uh, of course, it makes sense that if we are steadfast in our love for other people, steadfast in our faithfulness to other people, there will be good favor with those people. There will be good success with those people, and the same with God. Um, he goes in this next one. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. The idea of trusting the Lord, right? The, the full desire and hope of God for his people is that they would trust him. Like faith, trust, belief. And like if, if he's asking and, and desiring something of us, we would believe that that's good and healthy for us and want that to be a part of our life. So, so trust the Lord with all of my heart. When he's saying all of heart, he's saying everything you have to trust with, your heart, your mind, your emotions, all of it. Like trust God. Like put your trust in him. Like believe that what he says is true and good and accurate. And, and, and engage your, the actions of your life in relationship to that. Trust God. Don't lean on my understanding, my ability to perceive the world and all that's going on and trying to figure out how it's all operating and then trying to make my best decision of what I think should happen. He's saying trust God, trust his wisdom. Like, like before, the only way we know God's insight and wisdom is through his word. So spend time in his word. Get an understanding of the mind of God in your mind. And then when you understand what God would desire and want, because you understand him from his word, then trust that. Trust that more than we trust ourselves and our, our inclinations and our desires of what we want. And all of our ways acknowledge him. All of our decisions in life, all of the wisdom that we need to operate in, acknowledge him. And it says he will make straight our paths. He will, if we acknowledge him, then the decisions that we have to make, the 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 course of life that we're going to be living and walking in, there's going to be a straight path. It's not going to be, hey, I could take a million different decisions here, and who knows if this is the good one or the wrong one or the bad one. It's the idea if I'm, a, if I'm trusting God and, and leaning into Him in the decisions that I need to make in life, not myself, then God is going to give clarity. He is going to give understanding. He is going to give instruction and wisdom. And if followed, there's a path that God is leading us down. Um, he goes on from there and says, similar vein, don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. So the idea of like, like again, don't just seek my own natural wisdom, but uh, on the contrary, fear the Lord. That, ob that, that reverence that we've been talking about even the last few weeks, the idea of a respect of God. So don't trust myself, instead respect God and turn from evil. So don't, don't just do what I think is wise or what, what I would want, the evil that I might want to do. Instead, have a reverent respect for God, and that will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Just seeing like the health, the overall health of the individual, the overall health of physical, spiritual, emotional, all of that. Uh, there's a health involved in that. Uh, verse 9, he says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your produce. And your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats bursting with wine. It's, it's, it's uh, interesting here, right? It's the idea of he's saying, like, honor God with the wealth that he's given to you, with the first fruits. First fruits, of course, is the idea that, like, the, the you know, if you're a farmer, right, and you were growing a crop, so you grew corn as a crop. Like, the first few ears of corn that come up in your field, that's the first fruits, which show you that the rest of the field's going to produce as well. And the idea here is honor God with the first fruits. You're not giving God the, the middle of the pr production or the end of the production. You're giving him the primary of the production. The idea that God has given us the wealth that we have. And so we're going to honor God with that wealth. We're going to give of the first fruits of that. And the result here in Proverbs is to say that the barns will be filled with plenty and the vats will be bursting with wine. It's the idea that like, is it always the case that when you give it, it and, and this should never be the motivation that, if I give generously, that means I'm going to going to gain an abundance of wealth. It's not like it's a get-rich-quick scheme that if I give to God, then I'm going to get a whole lot more in return. I think it has more of the idea that those who are faithful to God, God is faithful to them. That God God does honor and respect and and bless those who, who honor Him and respect Him. And I, I would think probably in the same vein that those who have the discipline 
to be generous with the wealth God's given them, probably also have the discipline to how to care for the rest of the, the finances or wealth that God has given to that person. He goes on from here and he says, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline, but be weary when repro- or be weary when reproved, for the Lord reproves those whom he loves as a father, the son that he delights in. So the idea that like, don't get like wearied or, or bogged down or, or stressed out when God himself is disciplining you. Understand that that's the love of our Lord, that some of the struggles that we go through in life, not all of them, but some of the difficulties we go through are a direct relationship to the discipline of God, that God cares about us, cares about the health of our life, And when he sees something going astray or awry or something that's going to be harmful to us, he's going to jump in and and create like like pain points or stress to, to, to steer us back in the right path, as any good parent would do, right? Like I have three kids. When I see them going a path that my experience of life would say, hey, that's not a good healthy thing for them to go down, I'm going to try to put some parameters and pain points in place to try to steer them back into a healthy direction. That's because I love them. If I didn't love them, I would say, hey, go do it, and it's going to destroy your life, and you're going to have a mess, but like, whatever, I don't care. That's not love. Like, love is a, would jump in and say, no, 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 stop. Like, do this, and and if I got to like put a pain point in there to get you to do it, like, that's a good and loving thing. And the author of Proverbs here is saying, hey, just like, like, don't get too wearied by that. Like, like, see the love of God in that. Um, so, like I, mean, like I said, like, multiple different points here. Like, I don't know exactly what it is that God wants you to meditate on a little more deeply here this morning, but it's the idea, let me just break these down again real quick. Like, like, like lean into God's teachings, that will lead to years and peace, years of life and peace. Or the idea of pursue love and faithfulness, which will lead to favor and success. Or the idea of trusting the Lord and not yourself and letting God create a straight path for us. Maybe it's the idea of, of, turning, uh, of fearing God and turning from evil, and there's a, a healthy refreshment that comes from that. Or it's the idea of being faithful with the wealth that God's given us and realize that God will bless abundantly from that uh, with plenty. Or the idea of God's discipline resting on us and seeing that as love rather than just a wearying weight that's on us. And so, like, the the thing I think I love the most about processing through Proverbs a bit here is, like, understanding that God has given us knowledge and wisdom and instruction and all of these different pieces that we're talking about here. Like, this is God's grace to us today. It's God's grace to say to us, like, hey, if you do this, this is how I've designed the world to operate. If you are a person who leans into my teaching, who's faithful and loving, who trusts the Lord, who fears him and turns from evil, who, who's faithful with their wealth and who, who, who rightfully sees the discipline of God. If you're faithful in those things, there's good results from that. You know, the good results being years and peace and favor and success and a straight path and plenty and love. Like, that's beautiful things to think that if we just heed the wisdom of God and put the wisdom of God into practice in our life, there is good that comes from that. Uh, as God designed his world to operate that way. So think through, maybe take some time today as you look through this passage again and really think through what areas does God want you to meditate on. Maybe he wants you to meditate on this this idea of honoring the Lord with your wealth and think, what does that look like for you to honor him with with your wealth? Maybe he's going to ask you to, to process and think deeply on the idea of steadfast love and faithfulness. How can you be a steadfast, loving person, a faithful person. Um, so, you know, whatever else is in there as well, too. So take some time. Think through what the Lord is, is asking of us here. Meditate and process for you personally what it might look like to see some of these things change in your life. And then know that if we put the time into to see the Lord change these things in our life, put the effort in there, like there's good results that take place from that. So let's hear the wisdom of God today. And let him uh, just to continue to mature us and change us. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and pray. And then we'll be done today. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for that you didn't just leave us alone without your insight, your knowledge, your wisdom, your instruction. But Lord, you give it to us that we might understand how you've created this world to work and operate 
and that you want good for us in our lives. You want good for us and our families and our friends and our relationships, and you want good for your people. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us to trust you, to trust your wisdom, to lean on your wisdom and not our own wisdom and our own understanding. Lord, help us to be people of, of steadfast love and faithfulness, to be people who honor you with our wealth, the people who respect the discipline that you give to us, people that seek out your, your knowledge and your understanding and your, com your commandments, Lord. Pray that we would, we would seek that in our lives, knowing that there's so much good that happens to us and those around us through that. Um, and so, Lord, I just pray that you would challenge us today, help us to meditate on what we need to meditate on, that we might continue to grow in faithfulness in these areas. Uh, so, Lord, work in my heart, work in the hearts of those in your church. May you be glorified as always. Lord, we love you deeply. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Vine Church, thank you again, as always, for joining me. I really just look forward to you continuing to pour into these passages uh, with me. And I just think the more time we spend in the Word of God, the more we understand the mind of God, and we begin to continually live that out in our lives. So uh, let's just continue to spend time with God in prayer and in His Word together as we move forward as a church. So have a good week. Hopefully you stay a little cool this weekend as it's supposed to get pretty hot. And we will see you again here next Thursday. Thanks.